see you. I was so excited when I got your phone call about the recipes and cooking stuff. You know how much I love to talk about that kind of thing. But you didn't say on the phone what your rush is. What's the occasion? Oh, someone's coming into town. Is it anybody I know? Oh, she's coming? Oh, that'll be great. I'm sure you guys will have a good time. So you just want to make a nice dinner for her when she comes? Okay, well, that's really nice. I'm sure she'll enjoy it. Well, um, after we got off the phone, I started thinking about some recipes and uh, some ideas. So I grabbed my cookbook. So why don't we go sit down in the kitchen and we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I've got a little piece of paper here and I'm just going to make some notes for you as we go. So, what do you have in mind so far? Any ideas? Get a starting place. Okay. Just something nice. So, do you want to kind of go all out and do you know, everything, an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I think that's the way to go. Okay, so let's see. I like this book because it has a whole section for just holiday dinners. And that's what this is, so that's perfect. Set this here for now. So let's just flip through and see if anything jumps out at us. it's winter time and it's chilly out, maybe your appetizer can be a soup of some kind. Does that sound good? Okay. I think I have one in mind. I've made this before and it's wonderful. Let me see if I can find it. Mm, there's a picture of it. Oh, here it is. around so you can see it. You see that? This is an acorn squash soup and it's really delicious. And I love this picture. Um, I love the whole <laughs> sort of holiday scene that they've set for the picture, but this is a really good sort of appetizer soup. Um, it's very rich and tasty, a little bit sweet. So, what is, how does this one sound? Do you think you want to try that? Okay. Alright, I'll write that down and I'll find the recipe. Okay. So. Appetizer. Corn squash soup. And let's see. Oh, the recipe is on page 294. And when we're done, you can take this book with you and just use the recipes yourself. There's 
several of them on a little, on a bed of, I think, kale leaves for a nice pretty presentation. This is the route you want to go for your main course. Okay. Let's see. Main course. Chicken. Alouette. Did I spell that right? Yes. And that recipe is on page 295. made a soup before? Okay, well, I think this one is pretty easy. So, you're gonna need a few things though. You're going to need uh, some acorn squash. Um, now, this recipe says four. I think this, uh, let's see, okay, yeah, this yields eight servings. And that's probably much more than you would need, you only need two servings. 
do let's well, do you want to have some leftover? yeah it's always good to have leftovers okay so what I recommend is for you to just cut this recipe in half okay so um, but I'll read you the recipe as is just remember to cut the recipe in half I'll write that down for you so you don't forget so you don't want to have for eight people. That'll last you forever. Okay. Half recipe for acorn squash soup. That way you'll have enough for both of you and a little bit left over. Okay. So, this says you need four acorn squash, three carrots sliced, one onion sliced, a third cup of water, two tablespoons of butter or margarine, a tablespoon of all-purpose flour, um, a uh, one teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, about 14 ounces of chicken broth, half a cup of sherry, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, eighth teaspoon of paprika, a dash of ground allspice, a dash of red pepper, one cup of half and half, one and a half tablespoons of sherry, uh, didn't I already say sherry? No, that might be for something else, okay kale leaves and paprika. Okay, yeah, the kale leaves and paprika are for just kind of garnishing at the end. Okay, so now let's look at the instructions. Um, before we do that, though, is there anything... Do you have everything on here? Um, sorry, I can lend you something if you need anything. Um, All-purpose flour. Yeah, I have a bag. Yeah, of course. There's no problem. Let me just grab it real quick. Yeah. I think that'll work. Yeah, this is a big one. It's a five pound bag and you... <laughs> All you need is a tablespoon for this recipe, so... I think this should be fine. Mm. Yeah, this will be plenty to stop. Yeah, you can bring it back to me. I don't know, next week sometime. Whenever. And, you know, feel free to use as much as you need for this recipe. Not a lot, but if you want to make something else, you're more than welcome to hang on to the bag. I've got plenty. This is all purpose flour. Cool. Okay, so I'll give this to you. Here you go. I set it down here for you. Okay. And what else do you need? You've got everything else? and whatnot. It's always handy. So, yeah, you're more than welcome to use this. And it'll be probably a little bit better tasting and better for you than just a can of the stuff at the store. A lot less sodium. like 
think you need about 14 ounces, so I don't think this is quite 14, so you might need to still buy a little bit, but you're welcome to use this also. Okay, and do you have, um, at home, do you have a wooden spoon? Serve squash 
shells on a bed of kale and sprinkle with paprika. And that gets that nice little, I don't know, gives it a little extra flair. It looks really nice on the table. Okay, so does that all make sense? recipe, you're going to need um, a package of frozen puff pastry sheets, and you want to thaw them out, and then a container of garlic and spice flavored alouetta cheese. If you can't find that, or if you prefer, you can actually sub in um, some uh, chive and onion flavored um, cream cheese. That will do the trick as well. So, about a half a cup or so. Um, so, now this recipe calls for six skinned and boned chicken breast halves, but you are not going to need that many because it's just the two of you. So, again, uh, maybe cut this recipe in half as well. So, I'll write that down. Cut it in half or just do two chicken breasts. So, half recipe for chicken alouette. Okay. Uh, you'll also need some salt, pepper, one egg beaten, spoon of water and kale leaves for garnish if you want. Uh, I liked how in the picture they were sort of set on a little bed of kale leaves. It was pretty. Um, now, you need to um, beat an egg for this recipe. Do you have a whisk? If you don't have a whisk, you can use a fork uh, to beat the egg and that'll work pretty good. But um, well, Would you like to borrow mine? Let me grab it. Okay. Yep, this will work just fine. So, you can take this with you. And just, you know how to beat an egg. It's not hard, <laughs> but it's good to have a whisk. Okay, so let's look at the instructions. It says, unfold pastry sheets and roll each sheet into a rectangle on a lightly floured surface. Okay, so you, you're going to need some flour for this one as well. So, you have that bag. You'll have plenty. Um, let's see. Cut one sheet into 7 by 6 inch rectangles and cut the second sheet into 7 by 6 inch rectangles and one Let's see. Oh yeah, and one 12 by 6 inch rectangle. Um, so for that, with the pastry sheets, you're going to need to roll them out with a rolling pin. Do you have one of those? No? <laughs> okay, that's fine. I have one. Um, let me go get it. One sec. Okay. This is a miniature one, but it'll still work just fine, I think, for what you're doing. Um, okay. Okay, then it says, set large rectangle aside, shape each small rectangle into an oval by trimming off the corners. So you're gonna roll them out and make little rectangles. And then with the smaller ones, you're going to cut the corners off to make an oval. And then it says, spread pastry ovals evenly with cheese. Sprinkle chicken breast halves with salt and pepper and place one in the center of each pastry oval. Lightly moisten the pastry edges with water. Fold ends over chicken, 
fold sides over and press to seal. Place each bundle seam side down on a lightly greased baking sheet. Um, do you have a baking sheet? Okay, good. And it says, cut remaining large pastry rectangle into 12 by quarter inch strips. So long strips. Braid two strips together and place crosswise over chicken bundles, trimming and reserving excess braid. Braid two additional strips and place lengthwise over bundle, trimming and tucking ends under. That's just going to make it look really pretty, like in the picture. Repeat procedure with remaining strips. Cover and refrigerate for up to two hours if desired. So then after that two hours is up is when you want to um, beat the egg and um, add a tablespoon of water to the egg. And then you're going to brush the egg wash over uh, the little bundles that you've made. And then you're going to bake those at 400 uh, and make sure it's on the lower, your, um, lower oven rack. So do that for 25 minutes, um, but keep an eye on them. Watch them to see when they turn kind of a golden brown color. when they're ready, but it should be about 25 minutes. And that's it. Pretty simple. It's a little bit involved if you want to do the little uh, pastry braiding, but I think it's worth the extra time because it's a really pretty little detail. It's going to make it look really nice. Okay, so you've got your rolling pin now. Sides of a nine inch 
spring form pan with a strip. Split lady fingers in half lengthwise. Line sides and bottom of pan with the lady fingers. Set aside. So now it says, drain apricots, reserving half a cup of juice. So remember to hang on to about a half a cup of the juice that's in the can. Uh, because you're gonna use that later. Place knife blade in bowl of food processor. Add remaining apricots and process one minute or until mixture is smooth. Set aside. Next, sprinkle gelatin over reserved one half cup of apricot juice and set aside. Combine egg yolks, three quarter cup of sugar, and salt in a heavy saucepan. Gradually add milk. Cook over medium heat, stirring constantly for four minutes or until the mixture thickens and thermometer reaches 160. Add softened gelatin, stirring until gelatin dissolves. Stir in pureed apricots, brandy, and slivered almonds, which I skip because I don't like them. Uh, chill mixture until it's the consistency of an unbeaten egg whites, so about 30 minutes. And then it says, or I guess in the meantime you can be doing this, you want to beat one and a half cups of whipping cream until it's foamy. Then gradually add remaining half cup of sugar, beating until soft peaks form. And then fold whipped cream into apricot mixture, spoon into the prepared pan, and chill the mixture for eight hours. Remove ring from spring form pan, and remove wax paper. Beat three quarters cup of whipping cream until foamy, and gradually add powdered sugar and almond extract beating until soft peaks form. Pipe or dollop on top of the mousse. And then slice the reserved apricots and arrange on the whipped cream, which it showed in the picture. And that's it. Now this is going to be a pretty big dessert, um, but you should make the whole thing because it'll be nice to have a it makes about eight to ten servings, so you can have a lot. Okay. Um, now, how are you with measuring spoons and measuring cups? Do you have all that? You do have spoons. Okay, well, I've got a measuring cup here if you want to borrow it. It's just a really basic plastic one, nothing too special, but it'll get the job done. And it is uh, four and a half cups or 36 ounces. So this should work just fine. Okay, now let's talk about how you're going to sort of get everything done. Um, so let's see, you've got the soup and, and the chicken the mousse. Now you want to plan ahead for this so that you're not sort of scrambling <laughs> to have it ready. So the day before she comes, you should go ahead and bake the acorn squash. Remember you need to bake the squash for the soup. Do that the day before and uh, just hang on to it. Just put it aside. And I'd say about four to five hours before you want to serve dinner. Um, go ahead and make the chicken alouetta and put it in the refrigerator so that you can kind of heat it up later. And then in the oven, go ahead and reheat the, um, the shells of the acorn squash to make the bowl. And then make the soup itself and s keep it simmering for about an hour. And then, of course,
course with the dessert that needs to chill in the fr in the fridge for eight hours so I would also go ahead and make that the day before also and just have it waiting in the fridge and that'll be it okay so we've got your <laughs> your nice holiday meal all planned out and got all the stuff you need. I'll put this with your other items. And let's see, let's make sure you've got your notes right here. I'll fold this up for you. you have any questions about any of the recipes, okay? Alright. Well, I really hope you guys enjoy your meal. Call me sometime and let me know how everything turned out, okay? Alright. Well, uh, have an awesome time, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Alright. Doing good. I'm gonna move sides. Okay. Look straight into the light for me. about you? Are you going to be doing any cooking? Oh, that'll be nice. 